Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. My name is Tyler Patner, and today we are on location in Texas taking a look at the brand new RAW HM1000X Mini in 22 caliber. So today we have the great pleasure of filming here at the Firebird Targets facility and my good buddy Tun Jones brought out this uh, HM1000X Mini for us to do a review on while we were here. So we're going to take a look at it today. This one's going to vary just a little bit from a production model, uh, just more aesthetic stuff. The performance and the actual specs of this gun that you see in front of you are going to be identical though. It's just going to look a little bit different when you get it out of the box at home. Starting at the front of the gun here, we do have a Donnie FL moderator on here. I believe this is the Ryu. Uh, this is one of their new QD cans, which works really well. And you are gonna need something, in my opinion, on the end of the mini here. It does come unshrouded. Uh, you do have a barrel sleeve over it on a production model, a little carbon sleeve that you've all seen before. You can see pictures of it on our website as well uh, that has a half 20 thread at the end of it that you can attach a moderator to. So that's something I would definitely recommend looking into, getting yourself something to quiet the gun down. A little bit there. Uh, again, that difference in that uh, sleeve there, we don't have that on this model, but it's still a 15 inch Lothar Walther polygonal barrel and should shoot very, very well, assuming it's up to the raw standards that we've seen in the past. Now, the bottle underneath here is the standard 490cc carbon bottle that fills to 250 bar, so about 3600 psi, and that backs right up into our V block system, which has your quick fill on this side and your gauge on the other side there. And of course, that's your regulator system as well. All kind of fits together in uh, one or two pieces there. So very simple system, easy to fill, 250 bar fill pressure. And the great thing about having this larger carbon bottle on this gun is even though it, it does give you quite a bit of air capacity, you know, you're up to about 60 shots is what Raw claims. Of course, we're gonna test that. Um, this still comes in at a very nice overall short package. This is under 35 inches with this buttstock fully extended, obviously, and no moderator on it. So you've got a very compact little gun here uh, and does so with still giving you a ton of shots, which is awesome to see. That was actually really my only complaint with the raw micro in that you didn't get a lot of shots off of it because of that aluminum bottle. So stepping up to this carbon bottle and the longer barrel is going to give you more power, more shots, which are good to go in my book. Now you'll notice we do have an AccuTac bipod mounted on the bottom of this that we're gonna be shooting from today, uh, but we also have this Gray Ops Precision Rail System, which gives you a nice Arca rail, extends it out, and also gives you a whole bunch of M-Lock slots under there. Raw actually sells this directly. We don't have it on our website, but you can find it there if it's something you're interested in. Uh, but the stock itself is standard raw chassis, so you've got a bunch of M-Lock stuff here. You can throw a, a little pick rail there on the bottom if that's what you wanna do, an M-Lock to pick a tinny adapter. We definitely have those for you and you are good to go in terms of mounting accessories there's a lot of space to do that which is awesome love that on this raw chassis now as we come back to the breech block there is a significant update here from raw and this is going to affect the entire line of guns which is actually a very nice update in my opinion they've made the block ambidextrous so you can swap that cocking lever over to the left hand side you'll see that cocking lever cut out here on the left and you can actually take the bolt out and swap it over so you do still have that nice side lever system of course it's very smooth super easy to use but you can swap it so if you would prefer to run that on that left hand side you can do that or if you are a lefty and that's what you prefer you can do that too fairly easy process or we can do it for you in our shop before it ships to you Aside from that ambi change on the breech block there, the rest of it's the same. So you still have your full Picatinny rail up top. You do have a split breech design, so something to consider uh, when you're looking at maybe like a, a lower height mount if you're trying to get this really low to the bore. You know, you do need to clear that magazine in the middle, so just something to keep in mind. Most medium or tall rings should be just fine, no issues there. We do have a Lucid Optics scope mounted today for the review of 4-16, to 16, so fits this gun from a size and a magnification standpoint really well. Coming on down to the grip, this is an aftermarket grip that Ton has put on here. It will come standard with the A and B arms grip that you've seen us use like in the micro review. So that'll be the standard grip on this, but you can replace it with any A2 compatible grip. 
Now, as we come back, nice adjustable power feature here on the raw guns, all of them. You've got this little slot here on the right-hand side that'll give you access to that hammer spring adjustment. You take a little Allen key or something like that, you in insert it into that slot. There are holes in the actual hammer spring adjuster that you're gonna find, locate, get that Allen key in there, and you can turn it clockwise, counterclockwise. Obviously, clockwise would increase your hammer spring tension, give you a little more velocity. Uh, counterclockwise would decrease it. Um, it should come out of the box pretty well set up. I don't think you'll have to play with it too much, but if you want to, it's there for you to do so. Now talking trigger, RAW has one of the best triggers on the market in my opinion. Comes right out of the box at like five or six ounces. Uh, very crisp, easy to use. You have a little safety tab in front, back in that position right there is safe. And obviously when you're ready to shoot, you flip it forward. Uh, but a phenomenal trigger, very easy to get along with. Uh, big thumbs up, one of my favorite features on the RAW guns. And then at the very back, you have your standard AR buffer tube setup with an A and B arms stock here. It does have an adjustable cheek piece up and down as well as an adjustable butt pad in and out. So you've got a couple positions there. You can actually, uh, you got a little pick section there also on the bottom of this stock if you wanna add like a monopod or something like that. Um, all sorts of accessory options available for this out there. And of course, if you want to, you could throw a folder on here, change out the butt stock, whatever. It's all AR compatible, so very easy to do. But let's Let's get this gun on the range. Let's stretch it out to 50 yards and see if this little guy has the goods. Then we'll do our normal chronograph procedure, all that good stuff, and we will see you back here to wrap it all up. All right, guys, so we're shooting in a blind today. It's a, a nice little setup here, very comfortable. Uh, at a piece of steel at 50 yards, that's what we're gonna do our groups on, five shot groups. So first we gotta get our mags loaded. These are your standard 12 round raw mags. You just rotate that face around till you get to the opening. And then you just drop your first pellet in face first, like so. And that's gonna retain it under spring tension and you can work your way back from there. One slot at a time, load your pellet till you're full. Another thing to mention uh, is that the gun comes with a left-handed magazine. What that means is that it loads from the left side of the gun. They do also make right-handed mags. Uh, if like, for example, you have a, uh, like a side wheel scope, like a big side wheel on your scope, you can load it from the right and it doesn't get in the way of your side wheel. Um, so just something to note. The nice thing about these left-hand mags though is that you can actually see the number of rounds left right in front of your face. I'll show you here. So you can, you can kind of see it there. You've got that, that's your first shot, number one right there, and you've got all 12 rounds left and you can watch that cycle as you cycle the gun. That's looking pretty good. Bear in mind, these are real world conditions. There is actually a fair amount of wind out there today. So uh, we're definitely gonna be battling a little bit of the left to right, if you know what I mean, but we'll get through it. All right, so JSB 1813 is here at 50 yards. You guys could probably hear it on the mic, I'm assuming, I don't know, but it was definitely windy. You could get some, it was a lot of wind coming towards me, it felt like, uh, from the blind there, which is just a little window that I'm peering through. Um, so, you know, when that quarters a little bit, you get a flyer like this. And, and I think you can call that a flyer because you got four out of those five, nice tight grouping. Uh, but this is still a sub one inch, like a seven eighths group. So this is really fantastic in real world 50 yard conditions with such a short gun. Uh, let's try some other pellets and see if we can get any that do as good or better. So I had to recite in for JSB Monster redesigns. It's a 25.4 grain pellet versus the 18.13s we shot first. Uh, and this is five shots with those. So we were battling some real wind there, um, but I would say not as precise in general. And again, that could be the wind, uh, but this is about an inch and a quarter group there. And then I went back to the JTS 18s uh, because we had so much space here on the target. Um, and 18 grains is just the sweet spot for this gun, it would appear, for this barrel. Um, again, four shots, just like our JSB 18.13 group, but JTS is doing basically the same thing. That flyer there, just a little bit further out. And again, I 
I really shouldn't even call it a flyer. The wind there, just a little bit different, and you could see what that does at 50 yards. This is very real world stuff, but also an inch and a quarter in totality before those shots. That's probably a little tighter than those JSBs were. So JSB 1813s, JTS 181s, either way, those would be my go to for the raw mini. Raw rates the Mini for about 60 shots at a maximum from 250 bar down to about 150 bar, which is the reg pressure. We were getting 54 shots on the reg with the JSB 1813s, and you can see they're set up pretty hot here with an average across those 54 shots of 979 feet per second and 38 and a half foot pounds. That is smoking for that 18 grain pellet. An extreme spread of 23 feet per second is a little broader than we typically expect to see out of a raw, but certainly it's it's going to be just fine in terms of downrange accuracy for 50 yards and in. I suspect if we backed off the hammer spring a little bit, we'd see those numbers tighten up. And that standard deviation of three and a half feet per second is probably something we would also see tighten up with a little less hammer spring. All right, friends, let's wrap up the raw mini here in the 22 caliber, pretty much as stated and what you would expect from a raw. Good solid accuracy at 50 yards, even with that 15 inch barrel, you know, even in the wind, a sub one inch group and really that cloverleaf tight spot, you know, where the wind's the same every time for four out of five shots with both JSBs and JTS 18 grain pellets is really solid. Uh, it's exactly what you'd expect out of a gun of this price level, quality level, that tier. Uh, it certainly got a lot of good things going for it as well in the shot count department. Uh, over 50 shots with the 18 ones. We're tuned up a little hot on this gun. I did also chronograph the 25 39s, and they're running about 870. Raw is rating the gun for 850. So it would make sense that you're only getting about 50, 55 shots or so uh, with those settings. You know, if you bump that power down 10, 20 feet per second, you're going to get a few more. Uh, and you have the adjustability to do that with that rear hammer spring adjustment. I love the new ambidextrous breech block, being able to swap over the side lever from that right to the left hand side. Long overdue change, in my opinion, from Raw, but great to see it getting done here on the mini and soon to the rest of the line. That's awesome. Obviously you see the gun here with some additional pieces and parts on it, but just to give you an idea of how you can mod it out, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can bolt onto this gun to really make it your own. And that's kind of what we've shown you here today. But obviously the performance of this gun gets two thumbs up. I really wouldn't have expected anything else. And a big thank you to the guys at Firebird Targets, to Dan, Tun Jones, uh, for letting us come out, shoot these new M50 targets that you've been seeing blowing off in the background of this video. They're a ton of fun, and uh, uh, the moderated 50 version is really, really cool. Those are going to be available soon. Definitely check them out if you're looking to add some fun to your range at home or wherever you are shooting. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. Appreciate you all for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the Mini if you're going to pick one up and what you guys want to see in the future. We'll see you next time.